Let's look at velocity time graphs for uniform velocity. Velocity means how fast something's going, the rate of change of position, delta x over delta t. Remember that velocity is a vector, so that means it has both magnitude and direction. For linear motion, we can give that direction as a sign, positive or negative. What does that sign, the direction of motion, mean? It means which way the object is heading. So we define at the start, let the right be positive, let the left therefore be negative. Or if we're dealing with vertical motion, let upward be positive then downward is negative. We can define whatever we like. If we want left to be positive and right negative, that's also fine. We must just state that. If we want down to be positive and upward negative, that's also fine as long as we state it. In this movie, we're going to use to the right as positive and left negative. So when something is moving towards the right, then we say the velocity is positive. When it's moving towards the left, we say the velocity is negative. It doesn't matter on which side of the reference point the object is. That determines whether the position is positive or negative, but it has nothing to do with the velocity being positive or negative. The velocity sign just means which way it's heading, wherever it is. So let's look at some velocity time graphs, VT graphs. If the object is moving at uniform velocity, then the velocity is one value all the time. So we have a flat graph with zero gradient because there's only one value for the velocity all the time. If it's moving in the positive direction all that time, then that line is above the zero point in the graph. It's positive. If it's heading towards the left, if left is our negative all the time, then that line is on the negative side of the zero of the graph. So let's look at an example of a man moving with this kind of motion. Notice that he's always heading to the right. We've chosen to the right to be positive. It doesn't mean that he's always at the right of the zero point. Sometimes he was left, sometimes he was at the right of it. Doesn't matter where he is. It just matters how he's heading, in which direction he's heading. To the right, in this case, to the positive. And his velocity was uniform, was steady the whole time. Now let's look at an example of this kind of motion. Again, he's moving uniformly, but this time he's heading to the left. His velocity is negative. For each of these graphs, the velocity is positive, so the direction is the same. So the man is going to head towards the right in all three cases. The difference between the three graphs is the magnitude of the velocity. Here he's going to go slowly, faster, and fastest. And that is what we see. The area underneath a velocity time graph tells us displacement, change in position, how far the man went in this case. The gradient tells us acceleration, how much the velocity changed per time. So if we compare these three graphs, we see, of course, in the first case, the motion took a long time. In the second case, it took shorter, and in the last case, it took the shortest. Why? Because firstly, he was going slowly, so to go a certain distance needed a long time. In the second case, it took less time because he was going faster, and in the last case, he was going very quickly, so it took a short time. The area underneath each of the graphs is meant to be the same, because in all cases the man has the same displacement, the same change in position. Now let's speak about the gradient of these three graphs. All of them have a zero gradient because they are flat. They have no gradient. The gradient of a velocity time graph tells us acceleration. The acceleration for all of these graphs is zero. It's not accelerating because the motion is uniform. How about these graphs? In all cases, the direction of the velocity is the same. It's negative. In other words, the man is going to move to the left in all cases. However, the magnitudes differ. So the first case has a low magnitude. He's going to move slowly. And so to move a certain displacement, he has to take a long time. In the second case, he takes less time to get the same area under the graph as the first case. In other words, to have the same displacement displacement as in the first case. And in the last case, he really needs very little time to get the same area under the graph as in the first case, to have the same displacement.
end as in the first case. So let's watch what's happening here. And indeed you can see slowly, faster and fastest. And all of them heading in the negative direction towards the left. So their velocities are negative in all cases. 